Welcome to Coming Home, Survive and Thrive in Homeschooling. This week we talk about leaving your child to be or masterly inactivity. Leaving the child to be. What does this mean? For how long? How does one do this without being negligent or manipulating? Why is it important and what are its benefits? In previous podcasts, I have referred to giving children time to be children and learning from self-directed activities. Recently, Fiona, in podcast 17, told us how important this was to their homeschooling life and gave some examples. Masterly inactivity is how those in Charlotte Mason circles refer to it. At first glance, it seems like an oxymoron. How is inactivity creating mastery in anything? We need to unpack this notion and challenge perspectives which do not fairly represent this important aspect of successful homeschooling. Concentrating instead on the how, why, what, where and when of it. It might help to first define what it's not and then concentrate on exploring what it is and how to learn to set up time and space for this masterly inactivity. Firstly, it is not laziness on the part of the parent. Rather, it takes time, effort, thought and a lot of planning to employ. Secondly, it is not an excuse for inappropriate use of time by the child. The inactivity, that is, unassigned work, has purpose. All right then, to leave a child to be is to give them a time and space to explore their ideas and let those ideas be developed as far as the child is able to at the time. It is to grow in the ability of thinking through a thought and allowing it to ripple out like a stone on the water or growing like the roots of a tree on and on into the many varied directions and possibilities. Then the facility to show them how questions resulting from such idea exploration can be answered leading to perhaps more masterly inactivity. It is a step of faith for the parent to allow this where she is not needed except to keep a parental eye on things. Trusting the child without input from the adult may be a new experience for the mother if she is accustomed to organising their whole schooled day. Moving from a controlled space to more freedom to think and do for the child could be more difficult for the parent to learn than the child. Mother, step back and leave your child to be for a period of time. You do not need to require an outcome for the child to hand in to you as evidence of time well spent. You will see the evidence in their play building, singing, music, acting out, drawing and making. Trust to the natural, innocent, curious mind of the child. It is we adults who have long lost this ability. Perhaps this will encourage us to do the same and begin to relearn what was long pushed aside. When given freedom to think and pursue ideas within good parental boundaries, a child will naturally become better and easier about it. Remember, one of your goals is to teach your child how to think and not what to think. Giving them the time to develop this skill will greatly enhance their ability to think outside the proverbial box and question life. Discoveries happen with. What happens if I do this? Or what if I do this instead? It's thinking off the beaten track. But these are how important discoveries, new recipes and patterns are made and inventions happen. And now for the how. First, you need an understanding between the mother and child as to what is acceptable. An appropriate 
respectful relationship and loving authority is a prerequisite. The mother needs to trust the behavior of the child. If this is an issue for you, work on that first. Good habits, respectful treatment of people, property and pets is necessary and so is obedience to a mother's instructions. If needed, start slowly with quiet oversight of the child. Creating an atmosphere means being sure she has what she needs to draw, build and make. Paper and other stationery, books, piano or other instrument, blocks, dress-up clothes, craft necessaries, maybe a magnifying glass and microscope with the knowledge of how to find things to look at, a broken radio, CD player or other old electronic device. Cut the plug off first and supply screws, screwdrivers and other tools. You'll need boxes, bags and shelves to store partly finished projects or display the finished ones and a wall or a big notice board to hang up artwork. Increase the time as experience becomes more natural. The chance to be or masterly inactivity can be slotted in at any time that works for your situation. In my house, we would get the necessary book work done and there is the purposeful playtime that followed. Decide how long this period of time will be and set a timer. When it goes off, and if there's a little more of something needed to finish, allow it. Otherwise, time's up. If it's a game to be returned to, can it be set up in a space where it can be left till next time? It would be frustrating to have to pack down a carefully made game if she wants to return to it soon. That would be counterproductive to the motivation of the child. She needs to know her project can be built and left until its purpose has been fulfilled. Don't get involved with your child's masterly inactivity unless he comes to you for help, which you do only as much as necessary and allow him to go back to his own thinking space. Although it could be an appropriate time to explain to him taking the important chance of teaching when the mind is hungry for it. You will, however, need to be disciplined and know when to stop, step back and let him go again. I don't think it's helpful to fix or suggest unless the child is learning how to think these things through for himself after being accustomed to looking to you for the next direction. You will both need to learn the how of masterly inactivity. You don't necessarily have to be there all the time, but it's not the right time to go and hang the washing out. If he needs you or has an important question, you need to be available then whilst it's fresh and burning in his mind. Your role will be to watch, not just see, but observe. Thank you, Sherlock. Observe how he is working, the process and the progress. Watch him become completely absorbed in the activity and how his mind leads him ripple-like through the thinking process. It will become a time of problem solving, learning to think beyond the obvious, the thrill of learning a new skill or information and the joy of learning if we will just let them learn. For us, it includes learning to get out of their way. If you're already familiar with and practicing an unschooling, more natural and conscious style, you'll know how to set up your house and the most helpful tools to have on hand. If you're more accustomed to a structured style of homeschooling, the difference between free play and masterly inactivity is the knowing what to have available, how to lay it all out, and how to encourage your children to get stuck in naturally. If you are wondering what is the difference between free play and just being or masterly inactivity, here are my thoughts. They are as different as black and white, but with a grey area where they meet. Making up a Lego car is play. 
but building a road, then a house, then a village is masterly. Drawing in a colouring book is play, but drawing on blank paper with media of choice and creating an original piece is masterly. Playing a board game is play, but acting out a story they've read or made up is masterly. To learn more about masterly activity or letting your child be, there is a link to a free ebook on masterly inactivity from the Simply Charlotte Mason website. I'll pop that in the description area. Consider taking a look at the Montessori approach to education. See if there are some ideas there you can implement. Also, the book Fiona mentioned back in podcast 17, The Children on the Hill by Michael Deacon, for a record of how a family made this philosophy their way of life. It would be fascinating to find a follow-up on the family some decades later, but I don't think there is one. I'll pop the name and the spelling of that author also below. To help other homeschooling families benefit from coming home, please like, subscribe and share. If you have comments or questions, they are welcomed. Please visit my website where you can find resources and a contact if you want to ask about consulting. Enjoy your children and I'll see you next time. Bye.